Well, when was the last time you backed out of the garage or driveway and got greeted with this? Yeah, another leak. Or more specifically, a leak from a transmission. Or even more specifically, a leak from a transmission dipstick tube. Well, you got a couple options you can use to address this. Option number one would be go ahead and drop the full pan and change the fluid if it's time to. Option number two is just pull out the dipstick and try to find out some way to deal with the gusher. In my case, I chose to do that. And here's a little test setup I used to drain it with. It consists of an old container top and a wife's discarded baking pan. Make sure your baking pan or whatever else you use stick under there can hold a minimum of a gallon. Okay, knowing that I'm going to pull the dipstick tube and knowing I'm going to get a lot of transmission fluid in the process, I need to find some way of at least providing a temporary plug to the dipstick tube. Here was my solution on that. A piece of approximately a quarter inch aluminum wire and I cut a groove around the end of it about an eighth of an inch in. A top mounted battery post cover and a rubber washer to slightly expand the top of the battery post cover. This cut the gusher down just a few drips so I could go ahead and work on the tube without having to worry about having more than a gallon of fluid come out. Now somebody just said, well easy for you to say, okay so how do I get the dipstick tube out? It's bolted into the back of the transmission. Well in most cases you're going to have to disconnect the heater hoses and then go in that way. It may be possible to go in from the side with a box wrench. Just make sure you tie something on the other end so when you drop it, it doesn't fall all the way to the floor. In my particular case, it's a 95 Mustang with an AODE transmission. Most Fords seem to use this same size dipstick, which means, of course, the O-ring will probably be about the same size. After removing the old O-ring and cleaning it up, here's exactly what it looks like. Now, the most obvious question most people ask is, well, how big is the O-ring? I'll answer that directly. It's three quarters of an inch outside diameter, and the cross-sectional diameter of the O-ring itself is about a tenth of an inch. Cool, somebody said. Yeah, I'll run down to Lowe's or the hardware store and pick one up. Yeah, not quite so fast. Most of those you're going to get in the hardware store are designed for water. They're probably EPDM. EPDM does not work well with transmission fluid. You really want Viton. That's where you really need to buy your O-ring from the Ford place. And relax, it's like one or two bucks. Okay, so on to my leak solution. What we're looking at here is the factor O-ring on the front and the two O-rings in the rear. Two O-rings in the rear are standard EPDM O-rings. Yeah, I know what I said. We'll get to that in a second. They're 1 16th inch cross-sectional diameter and 3 quarter inch outside diameter. Before you begin, you want to run down to the parts store and pick you up a tube of this stuff. Permatex for automatic transmission fluid. You're definitely going to want it. What I've done here is coat completely the upper two O-rings with Permatex all the way back to the backstop on the transmission tube. What I'm counting on is as I push it in, it will also leverage up the two back O-rings. Since they're coated in Permatex, they're a secondary seal on the transmission fluids and never get to them. And even if it does get past my primary seal, the Permatex is there and will totally encapsulate the O-rings. Now we've got our transmission tube ready to put back in. The next trick is to get it in as fast as possible to avoid any more transmission fluid loss. And once you've got it in, you want to make it stationary as soon as you can. You can fight with trying to put the bolt back in or try something different. In my case, I decided I would go ahead and put the bracket in first after I cut it from the transmission tube. I drilled a bunch of holes in it and then tie wrapped it. That way the tube went back in very quickly. Now to be sure it's going to drip a little bit for the next couple of days as all that transmission fluid manages to find its way off of all the places it was adhering to by surface tension. Transmission fluid, of course, is kind of a very viscous fluid. But after two days, you should notice no drips if your repair was successful. That wraps this one up. Hope to see you on the next video. Take care.